I'm going to quickly show you some of the uh, more advanced pond design tools in Site3D. So to create a new pond, I'm going to go and click the Earthwork and Pond toolbar and then hit New Pond. So from here, I want to create some earthwork lines. So I'm going to click New Earthwork Line and right click and hit Select Line and then select the line that I want to create on the drawing. So this one here. And then when I hit Finish, that will then show it on the 3D view. Then I want to start adding in some of the other lines. Now I could use the earthwork line creation tool and snap and go around the outer lines, um, which is very much like uh, the other tools. But we also have some options to create parallel lines as well. So I'm going to show you this option. So I'm going to hit create parallel and I'm going to select the line I want to uh, be parallel from, which is this earthwork line. And then I can either use the snaps to uh, create one from here. So I'm going to do, uh, just snap on this one, which is 1.5 meters offset. offset. Or I can do exactly the same again, so create parallel from this line. So it's a different line now. And I can go inward. So again, I can use my snaps, or I can just right click, turn my snaps off, and right click and hit manual offset. And now I can type in a three meter offset. And you can see whether you're going to be on the right hand side or the left hand side. So by default, it'll be choosing the offset, the side that you were highlighting when you right clicked. Um, so I could invert that to the left hand side, and it'll be on the outer side of this line here. But if I just click OK, it's now created me a three meter parallel line to the uh, line I selected before. Now, in this case, you can see that that parallel line goes parallel all the way around. And in this case, I do not want it to do that. I actually want to stop it at these points here. So we can use our split line option and the snaps to help me and to say, I want to split this line at that position and split this line at that position then I can go in and delete that extra bit that I do not want anymore. Are you sure you want to delete it? Yes, I do. So now I can do the same on the other line. So let's do the same. So I can hit split on this line at that point and split on this line at that point. And then again, I can get rid of that portion. Yes, I want to get rid of it. That's good. And then I can actually just create a new line going from here to here. Now by default, it'll create me, it'll be trying to create a closed line. Now, I do not want a closed line. I just want a single line that goes from here to here. And I can do that by right clicking and unticking the close line. So I can then say from here, use the snaps to help me and snap to the arc here and then turn off the arc to snap, go back to point and join it at the end. Right click finish. And now you can see it's starting to create some levels in here. So now I can uh, create a curve on that one and I can use these snaps to help me position it. There we go. So I can do the exact same on the other one. So snap to point, right click, untick the close line, start it here, snap to arc to here, snap back to point to there, right click and hit finish. And I can put my curve on as well. So again, snap to any point in the line just to help me position that one. So now I want to set some levels. So the inner line, I really want to be setting this to um, something much lower than the ground level. And the ground level is approximately 33 and a half meters. So I'm going to change this one down to 30 meter level. So I'll drop that one down. And then I want to set the other line to um, one meter above it because it's a three meter offset and I want it at one in three. So I'm going to set this one to 31 meters elevation. Now you can see it's starting to go underneath the existing ground here. So what I want to do now is just turn off the existing ground and show you what's happening. So I've now set a couple of these levels. I can set some more. So this area here is going to be a flat strip. So this outer line also wants to be 31. So it's the same level as this line here and click OK. And now I just need to level these two as well. So level this one at uh, 30, which is the base level and level this one to be 31. And you can create them up this way. So now we have this leveled basin with a flat area above it. And you can start creating more. So I could actually create another basin in here if you want to do and have sort of a, a berm between the two. So the next stage is to put on some interfacing on the outside of this closed line around here. So I'm going to do this one by clicking the interface button. And then I can put on some custom steps. So what I want to do here is I want to hit add steps. And the first one is going to be a one in three. So it wants to be three meters wide 
at a uh, one meter height. But it's going to be positive height this time because I actually want it to go up uh, in all cases. So I want to hit the force on that one here. So in all situations, I want a one in three going up from this outer edge. And then I can create a, um, a two meter wide flat strip here. So then I have a two meter wide flat strip. Now I want to leave this as unforced because I only want this in the situation where I'm going out of the ground. So in the situation where I'm actually below ground, I do not want that. So I can untick the mirror cut and fill and I can just right click on that one and hit delete. So in the situation where I was below the ground at this point here, it's just going to continue on at the one in three grade. And the situation where I'm above ground at that point, it's going to go flat and then back down again. So this is going to create a sort of a driving strip, a um, maintenance strip around the outer edge of our pond where it's above the ground. So I can then hit OK on that one. And it's going to create me a shape like this. And you can see on the 3D view where we have a flat strip which is going from one in three up flat and then one in three back down again. So this is basically allowing me to build up the surface outside of the existing ground. So if I turn the existing ground on now, you can see that area of the pond is above the ground, which means I can actually store more water in it than I would have been able just interfacing up to existing ground. But it's allowing me to create this sort of dynamic shape with multiple uh, grades and how I wanted to. Now I can also, if I wanted to, uh, create sort of an area where um, if you wanted um, varying grades around here, you can do the same. So what you can do is quite simply, if I just create an offset line from this one at um, let's say uh, 100 mil over, just to give me a little bit of a flat area. There we go, click on that side. And then what I could do is actually just add in some points on this and bend it over. So I could create this one, bring it over, add it over to here. And similarly, if I just bring this one to here like that. So if you want a varying grade and um, even a retaining wall like structures, you can do that in this. And you can see the, update, the uh, cut and fill and the water storage calculations are updating as you make those kind of changes. So now we have an area where we have a flat sort of siltation pond with the water to come in and sort of settle. Then it's going to drop down into this lower basin here where we have the um, sort of uh, typical one in three with a flat and then one in three again to uh, allow anyone to escape should they accidentally fall in. We actually have this sort of uh, climbable ramping at a uh, reasonable grade. And in an area over here where we are say hard up against another wall or something like that or we cannot have the pond going any further me we may want a um, a retaining wall style structure on this side here and you can create that and you can see it then is grading between the areas to find the uh, the way it does that you can see the changing grade going around here so yeah site 3d has some very flexible pond design tools um, and if you want to uh, you can even then use the moving options and rotate options if you don't like where this thing is you can hit the move and just drag it around, reposition it. Everything will update, including the storage and the cut and fill calculations. You can even rotate it by just clicking two points as a reference angle and clicking the third one as the uh, rotate that reference angle to this new line. And on the uh, translate, the move option, you can also right click and enter some values. So in this case, we could say we want to leave it exactly where it is horizontally, but I want to move it up by say a meter. So I can just hit one on the Z and it'll then bring it up out of the ground. And you can see then we have the same amount of water storage because it's still at a um, 300 mil freeboard, but we actually have a different cut and fill value here. So those are some of the options available to you for pond design. Thank you.